Like millions of other gamers, I've been gifted the ability to sink hours into yet another version of Grand Theft Auto V I don't already own, courtesy of the Epic Games Store. After seven years, I'd forgotten how big this game is or how much detail it had, and playing it at 60 frames per second in 4K, minus some hitches as assets load in, is a breath of fresh air. I don't mean to get autobiographical on you, but the best feature of this game doesn't require any guns or cars, and it's the one that needs to find its way into some distant sequel when this game isn't still making hand over fist. The summer before Grand Theft Auto V released, I was extremely overweight, weak to the point where standing for extended periods of time was extremely painful, and I was just not healthy at all. So on a whim, I decided that I needed to run a marathon. Yes, I decided I needed to run 26.2 miles when I'd never run more than half a mile in my entire life. Naturally, in nth review style, I dove headfirst into all the research and first steps that required. So Grand Theft Auto V comes out that September, and I'm a little surprised when the game meets out tutorials to run, bike, and swim in its early Michael missions. The game then unlocks a triathlon event. Now I don't swim, and marathoning doesn't feature swimming or biking, but it's sort of beside the point. The game offers you an endurance sport event similar to what my big, hairy, audacious goal was, and I can't think of any other game that does. There's even a Franklin mission later on when Devin comes around to visit you while on a training run, which, if you're training for a marathon, those are typically up to 20 miles. I realize that for a lot of gamers, these are just tedious time sinks where you destroy your thumbs trying to get a good finishing placement, but for me, it was so much more. Despite the developer's trademark cynicism, it's pretty clear that Rockstar understands the sport, and we're actually trying to replicate the experiences of a local racing event. The start and finish lines were crowned with inflatable arches, although a lot of smaller events are down and back, so this is usually the same place. Then you have the collapsible tents with the tables underneath. I didn't see any nice old lady volunteers handing out racing bibs from secure boxes, or the safety pins bucket, or the big orange Gatorade barrel flanked by stacks of paper cups, but that's picking nits. They nailed the single rep at the table on race day with the waivers because, like, no one signs up on race day. <laughs> Pshaw! They also nailed the athletes hanging around the starting line in branded and neon athletic gear, either loitering or on a warm-up jog. And then the race starts, and etc, etc. I had a friend who got into the Ironman events, both the 70 and the full, which is a whopping 2.4 mile swim, a 112 mile bike ride, and then a full marathon with transitions in between. Obviously the real deal is a bit more complex than what's portrayed here in this video game. You can't spend thousands of dollars on a carbon fiber bicycle with razor thin wheels that weighs 8 pounds, but the ideas are still there. The first triathlon event was fun, but a little short, kind of a tease. The Alamo Sea triathlon was about the same length, which was a little disappointing, but the change in scenery was nice. That third one though, oh, that third one. The Coyote Cross Country Triathlon is exactly what I needed, and it is incredibly fun. The swim across the Alamo Sea is epic, but then riding all the way down into and all around town on empty streets is amazing. Then that last stretch running up the hill, it's a great event that takes an actual half an hour to do. And then that's it. There aren't any more. It's done. Now obviously these are just side attractions in a sea of open world activities in a game about stealing cars, killing people, and committing other nefarious acts, but I'd love it if they came back with an even more robust offering of endurance runs in the future. Plus it'd be great if they included purely running events like the casual 5k, the 10k, the half marathon, the marathon, and maybe even an ultra, which doesn't have a defined length, but is typically just longer than a marathon. There are some fun superficial and mechanical things they can add or change to their existing setup to pull these off. Aesthetically, the first thing you notice is that there's not a lot of competitors. You're racing against seven other guys and that's it. There's no crowded queue in front of the starting line. There's no slight shuffle forward until you have enough space to run. There's no opening move where you're passing a bunch of people who are walking side by side in a huge line, annoyingly. In a real world race, Runners typically pay 50 to 100 bucks to run a long distance, and this price is typically a lot more with larger events, like the Rock and Roll series or the Disney events. Like, a lot more. Even though the game's longest event is a short race in the real world, I mean a half hour 5k time is pretty comfortable, there aren't any water or Gatorade tables along the route. That also means there's no graveyard of empty water cups either. 
There also aren't any porta potties and few things get the digestive system going like some intense aerobic exercise. Even though the race takes you through the city at night, the LSPD isn't blocking off any streets, and the race organizers don't have the course marked off at all, even with chalk on the pavement. Course navigation is handled by the game, and I got tripped up on this when I was originally playing these years ago, so you need to pay particularly close attention to the map, something you wouldn't have to do in the real world. I mean, not that I ever got lost on a run before or anything, definitely not. There are spectators around the course, but there's never a crowd, especially in the send-off and receiving areas. Along with the lack of competition, the events feel weirdly sparse, even though they'll pull all the ambient traffic and pedestrians from the world to do them. There are photographers around, and it'd be hilarious if you had to pay some outrageous sum for the pictures they take, like the manipulative extortion that usually happens in the real world. I'm not bitter or anything about it. There also aren't any distance markers, but considering the longest course is probably 5 to 6 miles at most, and these events have no standardized distance, that doesn't seem like a big deal. You can switch to a news helicopter shot at any time, something that accompanies bigger racing events, and in Rockstar tradition it's chock full of snarky commentary. Unfortunately it also skews your control, so be sure you're in a good place when you do it. For most runners though, the competition isn't other people, it's ourselves. An event may be called a race, but for most runners, speed and competition against other people isn't the point. With our run keepers and our Stravas, we track our pace and try to run better than we did on the last run or the last mile. The longer the run, the more complex the mental arithmetic we do on the course to figure out when we'll finish or how we'll finish. Unless you're an elite athlete, you're definitely not finishing first or anywhere near it, and that's perfectly fine. Even when you max out Michael's stamina mechanically, he's still a bulky dude. He can be fast, but he's not going to beat his felt competitors. For a video game, beating the competition and winning a medal is ideal. It's a visceral, understandable achievement. That's not to say you can't make a game out of beating your best times or learning to keep a steady pace over a long period of time. It's just harder. Mechanically, my biggest issue with these events is how they present power. In Grand Theft Auto V, you move around with the left stick, you hold down the A button to run, and you tap the A button repeatedly to sprint. This applies in swimming and biking as well. While in an event, the only meter the game provides is a vague stamina meter that refills to half at transitions. If you sprint too often and apply yourself too much, you deplete that stamina. But the mystery is in the power, that tapping of the A button you need to stay ahead of the competition. Obviously you can hammer the thing for half an hour, but then you'll destroy your thumb and run down your stamina gauge long before the finish line. There's an obvious rhythm that you can reach tapping the A button to get the best combination of power and stamina. Understanding that is how you'll place first, even when you don't have maxed out statistics. I was able to take Michael, who I hadn't upgraded with any stats at all, and run all three events and place first, just in knowing how to apply power, something, again, the game doesn't present well. Of course, this might also be a simile for running in the real world where only you know how much power you're putting in and how far it'll take you as it burns your energy. Or you've got a heart rate monitor. That's a thing, too. Of course, there's the art of training, too. Just to complete a marathon without dying, you're looking at investing months of your life running 30 to 40 miles a week, at the minimum. With shorter runs like the 5K, 10K, and the half marathon, which, yes, I understand, it's not a short run, you can be somewhat fit and not need too much training at all. I trained for two weeks ahead of one half marathon and still placed a middle-of-the-road personal time. You could use in-game training to build your strength and stamina with more nuance than Grand Theft Auto V does. But Nick, you ask, why wouldn't I just spend that time training in the real world to run real races? That's a great question. The answer is, you still can. People who own guns can still play Call of Duty. People who like cars can still play Forza Horizon. It's not rocket science here. This could be some really cool appointment gaming, like Animal Crossing. Now it's a big ask for Rockstar to expand these endurance events or create a season of them in the game that exists today. It might be more appropriate for it to be a standalone title like their table tennis game back in the day, but then they'd need to build a whole new map to accommodate marathons and other long runs, which is no light expense if they don't just import Los Santos. The thing is, Rockstar would have so many interesting angles to tackle the sport considering how toxic and snobby runners can be. A few years back, YouTuber Scott Kramer ran a marathon with no training at all, as a sort of, let me see if I can do it, and 
It was a miserable experience he said he wouldn't recommend to anyone after only running about half of it. He still caught flack from at least one condescending asshole runner anyway. And then there's all the comfy clothing, running gear, and useless accessories you can buy, and there's no price limit on all that stuff. With how Grand Theft Auto V is still doing all these years later, it's hard to say whether a Grand Theft Auto VI is even in the pipeline. If there is one, however, endurance events like this would be a great addition, yet again. I played a lot of Grand Theft Auto V and a lot of Grand Theft Auto Online back when it was still pretty not great. But then I lost some weight and started running. A lot. As I edited my first two nth reviews a year later for Watch Dogs and Forza Horizon 2, I was in full-on marathon training, and yeah, I ran 20 miles on Christmas Day. I ran two half-marathon races, and 18 months after I committed to training, I ran my first marathon. It was one of the greatest experiences of my entire life. So yeah, let's make a game out of it. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Did you get to mess with any of the triathlon events in Grand Theft Auto V? I mean, like I said, I know they were pretty demanding, so let me know down in the comments there. Don't forget the conversation continues on Discord and our new subreddit and Facebook and Twitter. And hey, guess what? I'll see you next time.